Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 44. Last three days, day number 41, 42, 43, we have been talking about the concept prime factors. We're going to continue with that topic for today and for tomorrow. Day number 45 is already going to end. We're going to have five videos on the topic of prime factors. Let's learn how to find prime factors of a given quantity. The question simply is list all prime factors of a given quantity. We're being asked to list all prime factors that we can find of 7150. Now, as I have always told you on many, num on, on, on many a times, on a number of occasions, that when you're watching a given video, when you're watching day number 44, I take it for granted, I assume it, that you have already watched day number 1 through 43. And that, and that you have mastered all the concept that I expect you to master. Don't, don't watch the videos out of order because it makes life more difficult for you and for me. Because I, I take certain liberties. I assume that you know the basic concepts. For example here, what are we going to do? Well, we learned either yesterday or day before yesterday how to find factors of 10. Factors of 10 are very easy. That's what we're going to do here. That's what we talked about. If something ends in a zero or a bunch of zeros, we separate that quantity which is without the zero and the quantity with the zero. For example here, 7,115 7, rather can be written as 715 times 10. Instead of carrying 7,150 and trying to find the factors of that number, which will take forever and ever, which will create a lot more work than is necessary. We chop it up into two parts. But well, 10 is very simple. 10, the factors of 10 are simply 2 and 5. Those are the two prime factors of 10. Of course, 10 also has a factor of 1. Every, every number has a factor of 1. And every number can be divided by itself. So if somebody asks us to list all the factors, not the prime factors, but all the factors of 10, the factors of 10 are, factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. But we're not interested in all the factors of 10, we are simply interested in prime factors. Prime factors of 10 are 2 and 5. Now let's work on this guy. What do we divide it? What do we divide it by? It ends in a 5. Should we start dividing by 5? The answer is no. We always look for the smallest prime number that we can define that, that goes even into this number. Obviously we can't divide by 2, it's not an even number. Let's see if 715 is divisible by 3. How do we know if a number is divisible by 3? A number is divisible by 3, three if the sum of its digits, 7 plus 1 plus 5, happens to be divisible by 3. 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 is not divisible by 3. This number is not going to be divisible by 3. We have, we have no choice but to start with 5. Had the sum, had the sum of this number been divisible by, had the, had the sum of this number uh, be uh, be divisible by 3, we would have done so. We would have started our process with 3 and not a 5. It is not divisible by 3, so we start with 5. How many 5 does 7 have? And again, if it makes it easier, we can do it here. We're going to divide 715 by 5. How many 7 does 5 have? Or how many 5 How many five does 7 have? 7 has 1 5. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1, becomes 21. 21 has 4 5s. 4 5s are 20, 1 goes and joins the remaining 1 goes and joins the 5, becomes 15, and 15 has 3 5s. Let's do it one more time here. 7 has 1 5, the remaining 1 is. Rem oh, blasted, I think I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Let me start again. 7 has 1 5, the remaining 2 goes and joins the 1, becomes 21. That's right, that's right. The remaining 2. Remaining 2 from the 7 goes to 1, goes to 1 and becomes 21, and 21 has 4 5s. 4 5s are 20. The remaining 1 from the 20 goes here and joins the 5, becomes 15, and 15 has 3 5s. Now this is where, this is where things are going to get prickly, okay? Pay attention. This is where things are going to get prickly. I'm going to erase the 10 for the time being because we need the room. 10 is very simple. We know what the factors of 10 are. It's very simple. Let's just, let's just keep this thing in abeyance. Let's keep the 10 in advance. We're just going to worry about 143. What do we divide 143 by? 
But we can divide it by 2, it's not an even number. 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 is not divisible by 3, so we can't divide it by 3. This is how we find, this is what, this is the process that you have to follow in your mind, except during the exam you have to do it faster, obviously. So you have to determine one, one prime number at a time, starting from the lowest prime number, one prime number at a time, you have to ask yourself, is this number divisible by 2? The answer is no. And you have to know your prime number, something that we learned on day number 19 and day number 20. Is it divisible by 3? The answer is no, because the sum of the digits is 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 is not divisible by 3. Is it divisible by 5? Clearly not, because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. After 5 comes 7. Is this number divisible by 7? Answer is no. If you were to divide it by 7, you know what would happen? This is what will happen. Look, this is what we're going to divide by 7. Watch, watch what happens. Watch what happens if we divide by 7. It will have a remainder of 3. It will have a remainder of 3 because 140 is divisible by 7. 143 you will see in a second. This is how we do the process. How many 7 does 1 have? 1 has no 7. That one goes and joins the 4, becomes 14, and 14 has 2 7. How many three? How many seven does three have? How many seven does three have? Seven. Three has. Three has no seven. And that three, since it has no seven, is our remainder. So if you were to divide, if you were to divide 143 by seven, the answer would be 20 and 3 seventh. Because the remaining, the remainder of three is to be divided by seven. It's going to be 3 seventh. Which of course we knew all along, because 140 is divisible by seven. Because 140 is simply 70 plus 70. 70 has 10, 10 sevens and therefore 140 will have 27. The point here is that this number is not divisible by 7. The next prime number that we, that we have is not 9, 9 is not a prime number, 11. Let's see if this number is divisible by 11. Let's see if this number is divisible by 11. How many 11 does 14 have? 14 has 1 11. 14 has 1 11. The remaining 3 goes and joins this 3 becomes, what do you know, becomes 33. And 33 has 3 11s. Voila. Let's do it again one more time. So we're going to divide by 11 now. We're going to divide by 11 because we have already determined that it cannot, 143 cannot be divided by 2. 143 cannot be divided by 3. 143 cannot be divided by 5 or 7. The next comes 11. 14, 14 has 1 11. One 11. The remaining 3 goes and joins the 3 becomes 33 and 33 has 3 11. Since 13 is a prime number, that's where the story ends. That's where the story ends. In other words, in other words, 715 can be written as 5 times 11 times 13. 715 can be written as 715 can be written as 5 times 11 times 13. Now we have to take care of the 10 that we had kept in abeyance. What does it mean to keep something in abeyance? Did we learn the word abeyance before? Of course we did. We learned the word abeyance a long time ago in our vocabulary lessons. I'm going to tell you which day it was. Just give me one brief second and we'll find it. I'm looking at my index card under A or day number 9. Okay. Day 9. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and of course I see no reason why you wouldn't be, it doesn't matter which exam you are preparing for, whether you are whether preparing for ACT or SAT or TEs or GMAT or GRE, having a good vocabulary is a must. If you are preparing, if you're preparing for example GRE, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day 9, or if you are preparing for the SAT, just type in GRE. Uh, just type in SAT vocabulary words, day 9, and the video will pop right up. Watch that video where we learn the word abeyance, which simply means to keep something aside. Let's keep it aside as in, as in, we'll deal with it later. Well, later is now. 10 has factors of 2 and 5. In other words, in other words, 7150 can be written as, well, if you do 10 times 10, we're going to have 2 and 5. Now we can do our things. So we have a 2, the next comes 5 and we have 2 of those, 5 and 5, so it's 5 squared. Then we have 11 and 13. 11 and 13. And therefore the prime factors, prime factors of 7150 are, the prime factors of 7150 are 2, 5, 11, 
and 13. 2, 5, 11 and 13, it has 4 prime factors. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. This one was a tricky one. You do the next one yourself, shall we? Let's, let's do, you, you do the next one yourself. 63,000. Prime factors of 63,000. Go ahead. Pause the video and do it yourself. Well, same trick as before. We're not going to leave 63,000 and 63,000 because that will be pure hell. That will be no fun. We're going to chop it up into two parts. 63,000 is same as 63 times 1,000. Let's take care of 63 first. 63 is not an even number, so we're going to divide by 3. 6 has two threes and 3 has one three. Oh, what, oh 21. 21 can be divided by 3. And that's 7. Oh, that's it. We're done. 3 times 3 times 7 is 63 and 1000 is simply is simply 10 raised to 3 which can be written as 2 times 5 raised to 3 which is simply 2 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 3 and therefore therefore the prime factors therefore 63000 therefore 63000 can be written as can be written as well we have 2 raised to 3 here 2 raised to 3 times 3 squared times 5 cubed times times 7 you mustn't miss anything one more time 2 cubed we have here 2 cubed 3 squared we have that 3 squared 5 cubed right here 5 cubed and finally the 7 from here so that's for 63,000 63,000 is the product of 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 cubed times 7 and therefore the prime factors are right there, 2, 3, 5 and 7. Prime factors of 63,000 are, prime factors of 63,000 are 2, 3, 5 and 7. What do you know? 2, 3, 5 and 7. Let's do one more, shall we? Again, do, you, do it yourself, the next one. The next one we have is 147,000. 147,000. You're going to do it yourself and see what happens. One hundred and forty-seven thousand again can be written as one hundred and forty-seven times a thousand. Thousand is the easy part. Thousand has only two factors, two and five. Any ten, ten raised to any power doesn't matter how how big the power is, whether it's ten raised to three or ten raised to thirty-three. Even 10 raised to 33, even though it's a very huge number, it only has two prime factors. 2 and 5. Let's take care of 147, shall we? Is 147 divisible by 2? Clearly not, it's an odd number. Next, we ask ourselves, is this divisible by 3? In order for a number to be divisible by 3, is sum of the digits, 1 plus 4 plus 7, has to be divisible by 3. 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 7 is 12. Oh, what do you know? Oh, I didn't realize that. It is 12. Since it adds up to 12, we have to divide by 3. I was about to divide by 7. I was being lazy. Let's divide by 3. You must start with the lowest possible prime factors. That is how you do it, because otherwise there is a chance that you end up making, you end up making a, what is known as a boo-boo. Let's divide by 3. How many 3's? We're going to divide 147 by 3. How many 3's does 1 have? 1 has no 3's. That one goes and joins the 4 becomes 14. How many 3's does 14 have? 14 has 4 3's. 4 3's are 12. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 7 becomes 27. And 27 has 9 3's. That's what we're going to do it here. That's what we're going to do here. 14 has 4 3's. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 7 becomes 27. 27 has 9 3's. And that clearly is not divisible by 3 because it's going to add up to 13. It's not divisible by 5. It doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. Let's divide by 7, which gives us 7. So what we find is that 147,000 is equal to 2 cubed, 2 cubed times 3 times 5 cubed 
times 7 times 7, which is 7 squared. 147,000 is equal to, is the product of 2 cubed times 3 times 5 cubed times 7 squared. And therefore, the prime factors of 147,000, prime factors of 147,000 are 2, 3, 5, and finally, 7. It has 4 prime factors. It has 4 prime factors. 147,000 has 4 prime factors, namely 2, 3, 5, and 7. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now. So in tomorrow's video, which is going to be the last video on the topic of prime factors, we will see how the concept of prime factors could appear on the exam in any one of these exam as an application of a word problem. It's going to be an algebra word problem where we'll have to apply the notion of prime factors. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.